Lately, I feel the word hack is used far too often. Pretty much any slight improvement on something is a hack nowadays. So it's not too often you see the word used properly, as in referring to gaining unauthorized access to a computer or system. However, the word hack is actually pretty appropriate to describe the Wim Hof method. Biohack, body hack, mind hack, whatever you want to call it, what it lets you do is consciously access something you shouldn't be able to. The autonomic nervous system. This system is the primary mechanism in control of the fight or flight response. Wim Hof's method seems to be a path towards achieving incredible feats like withstanding freezing temperatures and things like climbing mountains or running marathons without any prior training. But how? And what other effects does it have on your body? Well, the Wim Hof breathing method has three components. 30 or more deep breaths, followed by exhaling and holding the breath for one to three minutes, followed by a deep inhale, which is held for about 15 or 20 seconds. Depending on how many deep breaths you did and how long you held the exhale, that last deep inhale should give you a noticeable rush. Oh, no, not like that. Less than that. Maybe that's a little closer. Anyways, that rush feeling will last for maybe 10 or 20 seconds. Afterwards, you'll be left feeling more alert physically and mentally than before you started the breathing. This effect comes from stimulation of the endocrine system. Something about breathing in the way Wim Hof instructs causes your body to pump out certain hormones like adrenaline and noradrenaline to levels that you don't normally see in people's day-to-day -day life, which suggests the breathing is manipulating the fight or flight response. So what changes in the body does this breathing cause? One has to do with blood pH. If you're a fan of Michael Crichton, you may remember the scene in the Andromeda strain where one of the infected characters was told to hyperventilate, to raise his blood pH, to stop the infection from growing. The reason this works is because breathing deeper than necessary means you exhale a lot of carbon dioxide. Because most carbon dioxide is converted to bicarbonate and carbonic acid in the bloodstream, lowering carbon dioxide levels through deep breathing will raise your blood pH. Your blood becomes less acidic and more alkaline. While making your blood alkaline can have some interesting effects when it comes to exercise performance or resisting the cold, alkalosis can lead to constriction of the brain's blood vessels and reduce calcium levels, leading to increased nerve and muscle excitability. This is one of the reasons why you feel pins and needles when doing the breathing, and if you do the deep breathing step for a particularly long time, you may experience cramps or muscle spasms. You get these tingly sensations throughout your hands and your body so it feels like everything's vibrating. Mine was so weird. All my hands went like this, they just locked and I could not move them and then I just... Your blood doesn't stay alkaline for very long after the deep breaths. A study involving people trained in the Wim Hof method shows that the blood pH returns to normal just 85 seconds into the breath hold and blood pH levels out and stays in the normal range after stopping the breathing techniques. I don't mean to say the Wim Hof method is dangerous, I just mean to clarify the enhanced alkaline state of the blood is only temporary and that's probably for the better. Other than the raise in pH, another thing that happens when you exhale so much carbon dioxide is most of your oxygen becomes stuck in the blood. This is because carbon dioxide is what releases oxygen from the blood so your cells can use it. So after the deep breaths, you hold your breath on an exhale. Holding your breath will allow carbon dioxide to build up, and it will start to pull oxygen out of the blood and into the tissues. Because no new oxygen is coming in, and there's no air in the lungs, your blood oxygen saturation begins to quickly drop. Here a pulse oximeter shows my oxygen saturation dropping, and the graph shows how my heart rate is changing. One of the effects of this is that your body will try to adapt to these low oxygen levels. That is, it adapts you to environments where the air has low oxygen, like high altitudes. This is why people doing the Wim Hof method could climb Mount Kilimanjaro in record time. People normally have to slowly climb mountains over several days to avoid acute mountain sickness, because the body needs to acclimate to low oxygen levels at that altitude. However, since the Wim Hof method acts as a sort of high altitude training, the Wim Hof trained group could move much faster. The way this works is, erythropoietin, known as EPO, is secreted in response to reduced oxygen levels in the blood. EPO stimulates the production of red blood cells. This increases oxygen delivery capability in the body. So after a while of holding your breath, receptors in the brain will be triggered either by too high carbon dioxide levels or too low oxygen levels. These receptors will then urge you to breathe. You should try and fight against the signal as long as you can, but be careful not to pass out. Then breathe in deeply and hold that breath for at least 20 seconds, and you should be left feeling calm, but at the same time focused and alert. 
So at some point in this sequence will stimulate your endocrine system, leading to a strong release of hormones, adrenaline and noradrenaline in particular. Matthijs Cox and Peter Pickers of Radboud University led an experiment where individuals who were taught the Wim Hof method were injected with a bacterial endotoxin, a component of the E. coli bacteria. This injection isn't actually harmful to the body, but it tricks the immune system, causing it to overreact. 99% of people who come into contact with this endotoxin react for a couple of hours as though they have the flu. The test is normally used to understand the effectiveness of certain immune suppressant drugs. What they found was that those trained in the Wim Hof method showed significantly less negative symptoms when injected with the endotoxin. Essentially, they were able to prevent their immune system from overreacting. The study says, healthy volunteers practicing the learned techniques exhibited profound increases in the release of epinephrine. Epinephrine is another word for adrenaline, which in turn led to increased production of anti-inflammatory mediators. This study could have important implications for the treatment of a variety of conditions associated with excessive or persistent inflammation, especially autoimmune diseases. With autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis or Crohn's disease, your immune system attacks healthy cells in your body. Being able to tell your immune system to stand down through meditation and breathing would be an incredibly useful tool for people with these types of diseases. Even people with Parkinson's, a disease that is thought to have an autoimmune component, could potentially benefit from the Wim Hof method. In fact, in Scott Carney's book, What Doesn't Kill Us, Carney talks about how one man credits Hof with saving his life. He says that through Hof's breathing technique and ice cold showers, he can manage the disease with far fewer drugs than when he was first diagnosed. He says Wim Hof has kept him out of a wheelchair. Carney also talks about how a man who after two months of cold exposure and practicing the Wim Hof method had drastically reduced the pain and swelling caused by rheumatoid arthritis. Before practicing the Wim Hof method and doing the cold exposure, the disease was so bad that his index finger was swollen to the size of a plum, and he would have to have bits of bone removed just to help with the pain. Carney himself says he used to get very big canker sores every month or so, but after doing the Wim Hof method, they only appear once a year and are very small and manageable. Also, people who suffer from allergies may benefit from the breathing method, considering it raises adrenaline. Adrenaline is used as a treatment for anaphylaxis, severe allergic attacks. You may know someone with a serious food allergy who carries an EpiPen, a small device that injects adrenaline. So at what point in the breathing is adrenaline, or epinephrine, released? Well, the endotoxin study says that they were not able to precisely identify when the hormone is released, but it says the effects on epinephrine are likely a consequence of both the hyperventilation phase and hypoxia due to breath retention, as both have been demonstrated to increase epinephrine levels. It might be that because both the hyperventilation and breath hold steps are stimulating the release of adrenaline, you end up with particularly high levels. In fact, the study says that the adrenaline levels in the individuals trained in the Wim Hof method reached higher levels than those of people about to go into a bungee jump. From my own experience, adrenaline being released during the breath hold sounds particularly accurate. Myself and others have noticed that if you hold the exhale long enough, you will suddenly have the added challenge of trying to not piss your pants. Adrenaline is a key hormone in the fight or flight response. The fight or flight response results in physiological changes like dilation of the pupils, increased blood flow to the muscles, and relaxation of the bladder. In fact, holding their breath for as long as they can is a strategy taught to people who have pararesis, the fear of urinating in public places. The other clues that the fight or flight response is being triggered at the end of the exhale hold and the start of the inhale is of course the rush you feel at that point, and for me at least, I consistently hear a bit of ringing at that point in my ears and my hearing fades out. Another physical effect of the fight or flight response is auditory exclusion or hearing loss. What may be unique about the Wim Hof method is, because you first exhaled enough carbon dioxide to raise your blood pH, and then held your breath on an exhale so no new oxygen could come in, you are able to decrease your oxygen levels enough to strongly stimulate the fight or flight response. The fight or flight response presents itself when a threat to survival appears. It's not a surprise that your body would interpret low oxygen levels as a threat to survival. One concrete benefit of the Wim Hof method is that it will wake you up. The breathing is something you can do while you're still laying down, so it can very quickly bust through morning grogginess and prepare you for the day. Since adrenaline and noradrenaline have so many functions, 
we could speculate on various potential benefits. For example, fat and glucose are rapidly burned up for energy, so enhanced weight loss might be a benefit of the breathing method. In fact, Scott Carney apparently lost 7 pounds of fat in his first 7 days with Wim Hof. Whether the cold exposure left Scott's body with no choice but to burn up the fat for heat, or he consciously provoked his endocrine system to break down the fat, is unclear, but it was probably at least a combination of the two. Now, this still isn't a full coverage of the Wim Hof method. Along with the breathing, cold exposure is another key component to the method. And while the breathing has significant physical effects, personally, I most appreciate the mental benefits that come from the breathing. I'll discuss these points later on, so stick around. Also, if you haven't already, make sure and check out my last video on Wim Hof. A big thanks goes out to Squarespace for supporting this video. If you are looking to make a website, whatever kind it might be, make sure to check them out. They make the process really easy with award-winning, beautiful templates you can choose from and easy domain setup. There's no upgrades, nothing to install, no patches ever, and it's got 24-hour customer service. You can start your free trial at squarespace.com and enter the offer code WIL to get 10% off your first purchase.